human nature. Okay. Human, two dots, and uh, nature. So with this symbol, what? Um, I'm not telling you. There are certain things that are so ambiguous that they're better left unsaid. But the album should be pronounced human nature. That's okay. it. The first nine songs on the album, they are the human side. There are stories about humanity, about human achievements, about human nature, sang with a human voice. Mm -hmm. Three voices in that case. And then the nature side of the album is the last song, this 30 minute nature symphony, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that's why the album is called what it is. And there is a certain meaning um, about the symbols in between the words, but that's left for the listener to decide. There's not just one truth. So it's not something that actually exists, it's not a symbol that you took from no. somewhere, it's something that you made up? Sort of. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So, um, the essence of the album, would you say, it sounds sort of happy and optimistic. So, Yay. so it is an optimistic sight, uh, a way of seeing human at yeah. least on a personal level, uh, I I find the album quite optimistic, actually. Yeah, I and think it's it really is. interesting that you say this, and I'm glad to hear that, mm -hmm. because also we have heard a lot of opinions of the opposite, like, wow, what a dark, depressing album, and the noise music video is the darkest thing you've ever done, and the album is really like human destroying the nature, isn't it? And I just. I don't see it like that. I never intended that to be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the humankind. I'm very optimistic about our future. Mm -hmm. Very optimistic about the future of the planet. I mean, we have such tools in our hand. We have such wisdom, especially the generation after us. When you look at the kids of today, mm -hmm. uh, fills me with hope and pride to mm -hmm. see how they act. And, their knowledge and awareness of the world. So yes, many of the songs, they deal with these topics and uh, they try to give an optimistic vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are going for the better. So whenever I hear somebody saying something about the good old times, I get the shivers. <laughs> what do you mean good old times? <laughs> back when uh, slavery was still okay and yeah. back in the days where women couldn't vote Imagine going to the dentist a hundred years ago <laughs> Terrible. compared it to today. So mm -hmm. these are just the little things, little food for thought for people. Mm -hmm. Very nice indeed. Mm. Uh, so we waited five years to have a new album, which for some people, impatient people, could be a long time. But really, music comes when it comes or it just flows when it does. Um, so still, did you start when did you start composing the songs for this album? Was it many, well, many, I don't know, four years ago? Have you done mm. it gradually, slowly? Again, thank you for that. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. That uh, music shouldn't be contrived. It comes when it comes. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want to do is to force yourself to be creative. Mm -hmm. Nothing good comes out of that. Yeah. And that's why it took five years after finishing the previous album. The music wasn't there and uh, the inspiration, motivation for doing <clears throat> another Nitrous album wasn't there. So we needed to give it some time. But then it came back at some point and I started brainstorming over some ideas, uh, talking about the uh, themes of the upcoming album with the other band members at the beginning of 2018. And then the actual song uh, songwriting process took place in the beginning of 2019. So it took about a year and a half to get it all together, from mm -hmm. beginning of 2018 to May 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so as you said, well, now there have been, like, some of the bandmates have done some solo projects. Uh, well, you as well had a, have another project. I don't know if you intend on doing more albums. You mean Auri? Yes. Yeah, 2021, next year, another okay. album. So I guess this is sort of healthy for your band also that each member can do their own as well. So they've got time for their projects. And then, I mean, so you said you had to take yeah. some time off. 
So I guess it's good for the health of the band that each member can do. Absolutely. They're not constricted. No, everybody's free to do whatever they want on the mm -hmm. free time. And for example, when I go on my little songwriting frenzy at home mm -hmm. alone for five months, it's just great that they have something to do on their own and they can fulfill their own ambitions, musical mm -hmm. or something else. And everybody in the band, they have been very creative. Everybody has their little side projects that they do. But then when it's time for Nightwish, then it's all in. Wow, well, that's so important. It is. But it's really healthy and uh, to keep the mind occupied and do something completely different because then you get inspired by this thing on a whole different level again. That's what happened to me with the Ari thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a uh, well, musical mind always has different... Um, um, wants to go to, to different paths, so you can't really always try to constrict yourself to... Absolutely not. You should never feel imprisoned. No, not at all. Yeah, when, when there's something inside of you that wants to come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so the instrumental album, uh, what, like the second part of the mm -hmm. album, so you actually explained it to, to us now previously, but it sort of, why did you want to join the two albums, like make it into one, one whole part? Uh, mm. Wouldn't you have thought about, I don't know, doing it as a, another solo project? So why did you want it to be together with the other um, Human Nature album. So uh, it's linked. It, it just so. sounds so much like a Nightwish thing, the whole, mm -hmm. whole song. And actually I consider it as just one track that's separated into mm -hmm. a chapter, but it should be listened to as one song. But yeah, when I told about the idea to the other men members of the band, everybody was immediately like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a really good idea. I mean, if you want to do a, this love letter to our beautiful planet, this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really funny because no band member has much to do in that song. I just play a little bit of piano, that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything else. Floor has, I think, three little parts. Troy has two ideal pipelines and nobody else has anything. Mm -hmm. But it still sounds like a Nightwish song. Yeah. And it's a beautiful ending to the album. It is. I really think and the contrast that it has compared to the other nine songs, then you have this, it just makes a wonderful adventure when you listen to the whole album from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. You always have to be really, really humble before the songs. You have to listen to the songs, what they tell you, how they want to be uh, played and sang. So you shouldn't add things there just because you can or you should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just listen to it, be humble and uh, do your thing. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. So lately in every Nightwish album we've got a very long song. Well, well more or less a long song. So in this one, I, I haven't really looked at the timings, but uh, there's not like a precisely long song in the Mm, first part of the album, yeah. but I guess that it's like mm, we've got the second instrumental part to that would be like the long song that we always yeah, that's wait right. for. <laughs> the longest song of the first nine is I think Endlessness and that's something like eight minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just the way they came out, we don't think about these things in advance. We just mm -hmm. let it out and see what comes. If it's short, it's short. If it's long, it's long. Yeah, <laughs> as long as it works mm -hmm. and it feels right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, talking about uh, noise, uh, the video that you did, it is sort of darkish. Yes, it is a criticism uh, mm -hmm. of society, but it's done in a very like beautifully way. So, it's something. It is dark, but as well, it's very nice with colors. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a reminder, it's some food for thought. Again, I see it more as an optimistic video mm -hmm. than pessimistic. Especially the last 10 seconds of the video when you see the beautiful mm -hmm. forest and the landscape. It should fill you with hope. 
the real world is still out there. Mm. And this video is not criticism about technology or cell phones. I mean, me, all the band members, we love technology. We wouldn't have been able to do this record without technology. <laughs> we love our cell phones, mm -hmm. internet, all that, but it's a criticism for the addiction that yeah. these things cause in human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, addiction is the word. Yeah. And uh, it's such a shame that we have all these wonderful tools that we can use for the good to spread true information and uh, to be in to be connected to the world. I love the idea of social media, like Twitter, that everybody in the world suddenly has a voice. Mm -hmm. We have a voice, we can immediately put it out there. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of what you put out there. Yeah. yeah. And that's what the video is all about. Mm -hmm. um, I had to say it. A uh, lot of people have commented that there's a Game of Thrones sort of tune that Reminiscence? Marco pointed it to me <laughs> at some point during the rehearsals. And yeah, that's a pure coincidence. I've never watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> me neither. <so. laughs> yeah. But yeah, I can see the resemblance. I really mm -hmm. can now. But I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't understand it at all. Uh, but Marco was like, listen to this. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but we thought that, you know, it's still a whole different thing. Kind of depends where you start to count that riff and all that, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's only 12 notes in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's so many speaking. ways you can do so. Everything sounds like something exactly. if you start to look for yeah. it. <laughs> um, so, um, we also used to having the instrumental tracks of the songs. We will have this with Human Nature. Yes. Okay, that's good. It's <laughs> Not the orchestral album this time, because mm -hmm. there is no orchestra on the first line of songs. Mm -hmm. But the instrumental will be there. Perfect. Um, so it seems that since Im Imaginarium we've had, like the albums had a, a very focused theme, like they were telling a story. Maybe in the previous ad albums the songs uh, weren't, they weren't all about the same topic. Could it be so? Would you would you say that now you feel like you're telling a story maybe a bit more, or you want the songs to be linked in the albums with a with one theme? Uh, things just happen. I, I don't think about these things in advance usually. I just I have a few ideas. I want to do a song about this. I want to do a song about human empathy. So that's how's the heart. And then I start doing the song, then I introduce it to the other members of the band, and then we bring it home together, and that's one song. And at some point you might realize that, okay, these songs are connected, there is a running theme going through the songs, or sometimes there's nothing. They're just mm -hmm. all their own individual little things. And for the last three albums, it's just happened so that there is a sort of loose theme going through the songs. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no idea what the next Nightwish album is going to sound like. <laughs> <laughs> well, Remains yes. to be seen. <laughs> okay, I don't think we've got time for much more, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm.